Hey guys, it's Chris Sal and Sonia Martin from West River Health Services. And today we're gonna to be teaching you how to do a proper stroke assessment. Now some of you as first responders in the past may be very, very uh, familiar with the FAST stroke assessment. But today we're gonna to show you something known as BFAST. We're actually gonna add a few components to it. So anytime we have a suspected stroke patient, we wanna make sure that we have a good set of vital signs and those vital signs are gonna include temperature, and very, very important, we need to make sure that all of those patients have a glucose level, a finger stick glucose level. But once we have our patient in the ambulance, there's a couple of tests that we want to do. The first one we want to do is our simple fast stroke scale. And the way we do that, so I'm going to sit right there, all right, is to look at the patient's face and say, I'm going to show you a big toothy grin. And what we're looking for is to see if there's, at the the face and everything is the same on both sides, it's symmetrical. All right, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna check the patient's arms. So what we get to do is get the patient to put their arms out, okay? And us as practitioners, we wanna make sure we put our arm under it. So in case one of them falls, it doesn't injure them. All right, so we're gonna get that, and we're gonna get the patient to close their eyes. And the reason we get them to close their eyes is so they can't, uh, change what's going on. So once the patient closes their eyes, we go one through ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're gonna notice one of those we see the drifting or there's a loss altogether. So that's A for arms. The next thing is speech. And what we're looking for is to see if this patient has any difficulty speaking or if their communication may be different and they're having trouble getting those words out. We're gonna talk about those two different parts of that, which is aphasia and dysarthria, and we're going to speak about that more in class. So what we're going to sign you to do there is to repeat something that I'm going to say, and this is the one that I use. Sonia, what I want you to do is to repeat after me. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can't teach a dog new, old dog new tricks. <laughs> right? So that's actually pretty good. So we saw that she had a little bit of difficulty getting that out, and we would want to note that, note that on our assessment. So the next thing is going to be time. Very, very important is what time did these events begin? So when I ask Sonia's family, and they're going to say it began at 11 o'clock last night. All right, so we're going to note down the time that that happened. All right, so now once we're in the ambulance, we're going to go a little bit beyond our normal assessment with the FAST patient. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check their balance, which is very, very important because Nearly 50% of all cerebellar strokes are missed by providers. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to do what's known as a nose to finger test. All right, so Sonia, what I'm going to get you to do is you're going to take your finger, point it to your nose, and you're going to point out to my finger, all right, nose to finger. But what I'm going to get Sonia to do is I'm going to put my finger way out so that Sonia is forced to correct her balance to reach out to me, all right? So watch this, right? So nose, finger. And see how she has to stretch out? That's activating her cerebellum, her cerebellum, so she can actually reach out and we're seeing where her balance is. So let's try it on the other one. Nose, finger. Same thing, back and forth. We're going to do this three times and check to see what's going on. And the next thing is on her balance, and we're going to get her to lay down. So you can lay down for her. Is the next test that we're going to do is we're going to go knee to shin. Now, most people can do this without any problems, except for me, because I have no balance. It's just going to go up to her knee and slide down to her shin. All right, so Sam, can you do that for me? Your knee, down your shin, perfect. Her balance is in there. If somebody's having a cerebellar stroke, they may, their legs may get all over the place and be difficult for them to do that. So again, Sam, let's do knee, there, down. Very, very good. Let's sit you up now. All right. So now what I want to do is make sure that our eyes are functioning properly. So we're going to need our pen light. And the first thing we want to do is we want to check her pupillary response to see if her pupils are equal, round, and reactive to light. And one of the things that we can look for in a stroke is that sometimes we may have what's known as this, this cognitive gaze. And they can actually, the, the, the person having the stroke is their gaze is going to be pointed toward with the direction where the stroke is located. So what we do is a real quick check of her pupils, all right? And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get her to follow the light, all right? So just follow the light with your eyes, up, 
down, good. And we're gonna go left to right, all right? Next thing we want to do is see if F hard peripheral vision is function. Can you see this? Yes. 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 Just so you can see that. All right. So these are some of the actual little extra steps that we need to take to make sure that we are getting a good stroke assessment. Now, once we have gotten and gathered all of our information and everything, we need to give a good report to the hospital. The reason we have to give a good report is, is the better the report, the better they understand what's going on with the patient, the quicker they can get things coming up, and the quicker that we can call a stroke code and get everything ready. So a couple of things that we need to make sure that, the, that we transmit over to the hospital. The first thing is the time of onset. What time do these events happen? The next thing is, is we need to let them know if there was any trauma associated with it. These happen after a fall because that's going to be a big indicator of the difference between an ischemic stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke. The next thing that we need to tell them is we need to give them a good set of vital signs that includes an all-important blood glucose level. The next thing after we do that, we've told them everything, we've given a good report and all that stuff, is we tell them all the stuff that's going on in the BFAST and the FAST stuff and tell them every deficit that's happening. The better report that we give over to that hospital, the quicker they're going to get into the unit, over to a CT scanner, and hopefully be able to get the treatment that they need. So guys, on behalf of West River Health Services, with me and Sonia, thanks for listening. Bye.